Normally, I don't cover versions of TypeScript because they're not really majors. It might seem like 4.0 or 5.0 are really big releases, but they just go up one at a time with decimal. So 5.5 doesn't mean it's a minor release. 5.5 actually happens to be one of the biggest TypeScript releases to date. And there is so much cool stuff I want to dig into here. So without further ado, let's take a look. Announcing TypeScript 5.5 from Daniel Rosenwasser. Today, we're excited to announce the availability of the release candidate of TypeScript 5.5. So here's a quick list of what changed. We'll go through all of this one at a time. Let's do it. They made changes, they added set methods. There's a lot of other cool things happening here. You might have seen stuff about the beta before, but I promise you it did not break it down as much as we're about to. Let's start breaking things down. Inferred type predicates. I've been waiting for this one for a while. It is annoyingly hard to infer things once you're nesting them too deeply. Here is how things could work fine before. We have a bird as a common name, scientific name, and a function sing. We have a const national birds, which is mapping strings with the bird type. Then we have a function make national bird call country string. Const bird is national birds dot get country. So here we're getting it for this country. If bird, bird dot sing, bird is type bird. So we know that that's fine. Else we didn't get bird, don't have it. We can't call those functions. It's undefined. By making you handle the undefined case, TypeScript pushes you to write more robust code. In the past, this sort of type refinement was more difficult to apply to arrays. This would have been an error in all previous versions of TypeScript. So if we had countries as a string array, and we were to go through and map country national birds dot get country, and then filter all of the ones that were undefined, it's still going to think bird could be undefined. Filter wasn't smart enough to filter out undefines in TypeScript, even though this would obviously get rid of all the birds that aren't real, which all birds aren't real, but we're talking about undefined birds. And in this case, undefined birds would have been filtered out. So everything should have had the bird type. But since TypeScript wasn't smart enough to know that, you would still get errors here because bird could be undefined. With TypeScript 5.5, the checker is fine with this code. We finally know, just from this filtering, the condition that birds is all real has been honored. No more precise typing for birds. This works because TypeScript now infers a type predicate for the filter function. You can see what's going on more clearly by pulling it into our standalone function. Is bird real? This is such a, I love that this is the example that they used. <laughs> it's, they're getting meme -y and I love it. Bird is bird or undefined and we return bird is not equal to undefined. Bird is bird is the type predicate. It means that if the function returns true, then it is a bird. If the function returns false, then it's undefined. The type declaration for array.prototype.filter knows about the type predicate now. So the net result is that you get a more precise type and the code passes the type checker. Finally. Like, it, it, let's be real, it's kind of funny that TypeScript's been around for almost 10 years and this just happened now. Like, that's that's goofy, that's silly, especially because TypeScript's like the inferred type language. But I'm pumped, this is now fixed. Tezzer will infer that a function returns a type predicate if these conditions are all met. The function does not have an explicit return type or the type predicate annotation. See, more reasons to not do explicit return types. The function has a single return statement and no implicit returns. The function does not mutate its parameter, and the function returns a Boolean expression that's tied to a refinement on the parameter. Total TypeScript, obviously, Matt Pocock, the best TypeScript YouTuber, has a whole article all about this if you want to understand it better. Here we see type of value string. It knows smart enough for that. But if we go back down here, if we have an array that has numbers and strings and we filter it through is string by making that custom function, it's smart enough to do that. But if we didn't do the custom function, even if we ran is filter and checked that everything in it was a string, it would have assumed that numbers could still be in the array. That problem is now solved. Const example equals one, two, hello, three world. And now we want to have const strings equals example dot filter value type of value equals string. Strings still thinks it's a string or number array, even though we're filtering it to make sure it's not. If we change this to be the 550 beta, now it's smart enough to know that has to be strings. That's really nice that it's that simple now to get the right type when you do a filter. Another place this might be useful is if you have, here's an example, we'll have type mini user which is id string. I'll have type full user, which equals name string and mini user. Now we can have an array a const example will be explicit here. Mini user or full user array is what we want. We'll give this some examples. We'll have one that's id first, one that's id second, and one that's id third name only one with a name. I have the prettier plugin. That's nice. So nice. Cool. So now we have this example. It knows mini user or full user. But if I want to filter this here, it's going to be never array, which is actually really smart because we're still filtering if value is string. But if we do type of type of value question mark dot name, it's not sure that that exists because it could, it's possible that it doesn't. 
if I do value as full user. And here, is that smart enough now? Nope. I think I still have to write a guard of some form myself here. Name and value, that actually might work. Yeah, that's actually dope. That's so good. That's so good. Do you guys understand how much shit that simplifies? Oh, yeah, it's so nice that functions are now smart enough to do that. Oh, 10 out of 10. Explicit type predicates continue to work exactly as before. Tesla will not check whether it would infer the same type predicate. So if you put an explicit predicate, it's not going to confirm that it disagrees with the inferred one because that would break a lot of people's code. But if this breaks your code, you're doing something really nasty before. This, this would be where it breaks. So if you filter out all the nulls and then you push something that could be null, then it will error because we filtered that and now it's a different type. If anybody does actually have a code base that breaks because of the 5.5 change with this, please post those examples. I'm genuinely so curious. Control flow narrowing for constantly indexed accesses. This is another one of those ones that's like, why was this not a thing before? I'm sure we've all had this problem before where we checked that some value exists and then we couldn't use it. Like I'll, I'll do an even simpler example for this. So here's a really quick example. Let's say you were fetching some data from an endpoint that comes back in JSON. You know the keys are all going to be strings, but you don't know what the values are going to be. But you know that the key for first should be a string. Well, maybe we'll say it's like ID or even name. So we know that name should return a string, even though the type here is unknown. So we confirm that it is by doing type of example.key is string. But that doesn't work because we don't know what this is because we still have the type definition from here. Even though we confirmed here the type is string, that's been forgotten by TypeScript by the next line. The way we fixed this in the past would be to bind it. So uh, const value equals example key, and then we'd use this instead, which works because now we've made a consistent value that exists outside of the example. So TypeScript can keep the context of we have filtered this value. But as soon as you put it inside of an object, TypeScript loses that intelligence. Well, lost that intelligence. Now, with 5.5, it's smart enough to know because we confirmed above that this thing exists and is this type. Now it can use that thing as the right type immediately. So many unnecessary variables are going to be killed as was just said by Bone Broth. Super exciting stuff. One more fun one for the anti-TypeScript people, type imports in JS doc. Today, if you want to import something only for type checking in a JS file, it's cumbersome. JavaScript developers can't simply import a type named some type that's not there at runtime. So if we have a index.js file that needs to import a type definition from some module, it has no way to do that because it's JavaScript. We can't import types. And then you would want to do this after, but it doesn't work. The solution previously was that you would use a namespace import. So you'd import all of some module, and then you would call some module.some type. But what if this is backend code? What if your backend is written in TypeScript and your frontend code is written with JS stock? And you want to import the type definitions from the backend without importing the whole backend code at this point. That's what this new pattern enables. Now you can call in the JS doc import. And as crazy as that might sound, now you're able to get the type definitions from your TypeScript code in your JS doc JS code, which means that the TypeScript type checker can work across all of these different places and get you way better useful information. So, so nice that this problem is finally solved. You can use the same type multiple places if you want to define it like this by importing some module dot some type, calling it some type here, as a type def, now I can just call some type anywhere else that I want it. Super nice. Oh, sorry. Actually, I'm entirely wrong. This is how we would do it before. I had never seen this type of code before. Makes sense. Gross. But apparently they fixed it with at import. Okay. That's a lot nicer, actually. The ability to import at the top of a JS doc file actually solves one of the biggest problems with JS doc. Oh, I was wrong. Yeah, I was entirely wrong reading that. My bad. Thank you for the corrections, guys. This is huge just at import, because you can use this for JS files. So if you're trying to import from another JS doc file, this works too. Oh, we could also write our imports as a namespace import. Dope. I wonder if people are going to be mad at this the same way they are at out apply. You know what we need to check? This poor dude's about to get spammed so hard on Twitter when people complain about this. Regular expression syntax checking. Oh boy, everyone's favorite, regex. <sighs> Last thing I needed is more type safety by regex, but I get it. Until now, TypeScript has typically skipped over most regular expressions in code. This is because regex technically has an extensible grammar and TypeScript never made any effort to compile regular expressions to earlier versions of JS. Still, this means that lots of common problems could, would go undiscovered in regular expressions, and they would either turn into errors at runtime or they would just silently fail. But TypeScript now does basic syntax checking on regex. Nice. Okay, this is actually really helpful. If what they're doing is letting me know that I typo it in my regex, that I'm actually into. Someone who hates regex, this is nice. There's no capturing group named named import in the reg regular expression. Interesting. So if you use a capture group that isn't defined, it will yell at you for that. That's actually really nice. 
let my regex type def import import path imported paths name capture groups are oh oh this would have saved me so much trouble actually i don't know if you guys know this but there's a lot of regex features that aren't implemented properly across browsers we've mostly caught up but things like backwards lookups just didn't work in firefox for a long time so when you tried to use them if you were debugging in chrome everything worked and looked fine but then you have a firefox user report saying hey the page crashes or hey only the first word gets highlighted and things like that all of that was because there was no way to know based on what your export type was what features were and weren't supported oh this is going to be great also a good point this is going to be great for checking chat gpt's regexes gabriel 5.5 is the true 5.0 if only they actually actually use version numbers correctly. But uh, yeah, this is the biggest TypeScript release in a while. And now the thing I was excited about that I saw at the top, support for the new ECMAScript set methods. TypeScript 5.5 declares the new proposed methods for the ECMAScript set type. This is really cool. If you don't know about this, you should check out my video all about all the new features coming to JavaScript. TypeScript loves to sneak these in ahead of time. They did this before with optional chaining and knowledge coalescence, all of which have made their way into JavaScript now, but had been approved and TypeScript wanted them so badly, they just added them immediately with polyfills. And that's what it sounds like is happening here. We've declared the new proposed methods for the set type. These methods include things like union, intersection, difference, symmetric difference, a bunch of things that you would use to figure out the relationship between different sets. So if we wanted to get all the things that are shared between fruits and oranges, we could call fruits.union with oranges, and this will return all of the things combined. If we want to see which ones are only in like one or two of them, we can use intersection, which will show you the intersecting values between the two. So fruits that intersection between fruits and apples and bananas will just give you apples and bananas because those are all in common. This is so nice. I've wanted this for a while. This makes people have an actual reason to start using set. And my inner advent of code fanboy is hyped. This is gonna make random like one-off coding challenges whew, so much easier. Like imagine writing a diffing algorithm. If you have this, it gets so much easier to do. Like all those types of things become way easier if you can just compare two sets. And having all the type definitions work with this too, oh, 10 out of 10. We'd like to thank Kevin Gibbons, who not only proposed this feature in ECMAScript, but also provided the declarations for set, read-only set, and read-only set like in TypeScript. Awesome that like Kevin's not just proposing this to be added to JavaScript, but is pushing TypeScript to have all the features too. That's really cool. Isolated declarations. Declaration files, we all know the classic d.ts, which uh, famously you probably don't want. Let's find the Matt video. Actually, he's almost at 100k subs. Give Matt a sub. He deserves it. He's so close. Here it is. Don't put your types in d.ts files. People seem to think this is the right place to put all your type definitions. They're wrong. It's not. It's for a very specific thing that you probably don't want to be doing. Check out his video if you want to better understand. But let's see what they're changing here. d.ts files are meant to describe the shape of existing libraries and modules to TypeScript. The point here, as he's saying, is you want to have something that exists in a module or in JavaScript itself and point out to TypeScript what that is and what the types are. It's not for defining types. It's for adding types to things that are already defined. This lightweight description includes the library's type signatures and it excludes implementation details, such as the function bodies. They are published so that TypeScript can effectively check your usage of a library without needing to analyze the library itself. This is also key. If you're installing something like React, which in that case happens to not be written in TypeScript, but if it was, the output's still gonna be JavaScript. So if the code that you're importing is JS, the d.ts file is only used to assign type definitions to those things. It doesn't actually read the code from the package because then you're in hell. Whilst it is possible to handwrite declaration files, if you're authoring typed code, it's much safer and simpler to let TypeScript generate them for you automatically using dash dash declaration. The TypeScript compiler and its APIs have always had the job of generating declaration files. However, there are some use cases where you might want to use other tools or where there are traditional build processes that don't scale. Yeah, we're even running into this with upload thing. So the use case is faster declaration emit tools. Imagine you want to create a folder tool to generate declaration files, perhaps as part of a publishing service or a new bundler. Only there were some new bundlers being made right now. How useful this could be to them. Whilst there's a thriving ecosystem of blazing fast tools that can turn TypeScript into JS, the same is not true for turning TypeScript into declaration files. The reason is that TypeScript's inference allows us to write code without explicitly declaring types, meaning declaration emit can be complex. Yeah, yeah. We've run into a lot of problems trying to get type definitions out of our chaotic code. Especially with something big like TRPC, if you're working on that library, getting the types to work, whoo. Util.ts, export let one is one, export let two is two, add.ts, one, two, function adds, returns one plus two. This is a very simple function. Yeah, using let here is scary, I agree. Even if the only thing we would want to do is generate add.d.ts, TypeScript will need to crawl into another imported file, utils.ts, infer the types of one and two as strings, and then calculate the plus operator on the two strings in order to lead to a string return type. But what we want is just this, add return string. 
While the inference is important for the developer experience, it means that tools that want to generate declaration files would need to replicate parts of the type checker, including inference and the ability to resolve module specific stuff in order to follow the imports. Yep, you basically have to use TypeScript's inference stuff or write a bunch of custom stuff if you want to write the correct types. The largest part of why I've found myself writing more return types is just to make sure library code exports correctly immediately. But if TypeScript can do the inference for us and spit out the right thing quicker, that sounds great. Another example use case is partial declaration emits and parallel checking. Imagine you have a monorepo with many projects in a multi-core CPU that just wished it could help you check your code faster. If only. <sighs> If only I could relate to having a truly disgusting amount of TypeScript and type definitions in our code base. Definitely couldn't be me. But if I theoretically had a bunch of stuff like that, wouldn't it be great if we could check all the projects at the same time by running each project on a different core? Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Fortunately, we don't have the freedom to do all that work in parallel. The reason is that we have to build those projects in dependency order because each project is checking against the declaration file of its dependencies. So we must build the dependency first to generate the declaration files. This is so annoying. I even had this with SvelteKit where I initialized a SvelteKit project and nothing worked. All the type definitions were broken. Then I ran pnpm dev and all of a sudden the type definitions worked because they ought to be generated linearly in order to get the types working in my dev environment. TypeScript's project references feature works the same way, building the set of projects in topological dependency order. Oh, project references, I have trauma. As an example, if we have two projects called backend and frontend, and they both depend on a project called core, TypeScript can't start type checking either frontend or backend until core has been built and its declaration files have been generated. Core returns the frontend backend, and then we have other things that depend on those. For the above graph, you can see that we have a bottleneck. Whilst we can build frontend and backend in parallel, we first need to wait for core to finish before building either can start. How can we improve upon this? Well, if a fast tool could generate all those declaration files for core in parallel, TypeScript could then immediately follow that by type checking core, front end, and back end also in parallel. Solution, explicit types. A common requirement in both use cases is that we need a cross-file type checker to generate declaration files, which is a lot to ask from the tooling community. A more complex example, if we want a declaration file for the following code, import add from add, and we want to export function foo, which returns the result of calling this. Yeah, that's complex. You have to do a lot of inference top to bottom. But in order for this to work, we need to generate a signature for foo. Well, that requires looking at the implementation of foo. Foo just returns x. So getting to the type of x requires looking at the implementation of add. Yep, we have to go down the chain. We have to go, we see foo has no type, so we or return type, so we go to x. We see x comes from add, which has no return type, so we go to add. We see add is inferring its return type from two variables that it's putting together. We go find the type for those. And now we finally have what foo returns. God. Chaos. For developers looking for fast iteration time and fully parallel builds, there's another way of thinking about this problem. A declaration file only requires the types of the public API of a module. In other words, the types of the thing that are exported. If, controversially, developers are willing to explicitly write out the types of the things that they export, tools could generate declaration files without needing to look at the implementation of the modules and without re-implementing a full type checker. This is where the new isolated declarations option comes in. Isolated declarations reports errors when a module can't be reliably transformed without a type checker. Ooh. More plainly, it makes TypeScript report errors if you have a file that isn't sufficiently annotated on its exports. Ho ho ho. 10 out of 10. I like that a lot. Now, the one place you do actually benefit from return types, you can explicitly require them. This makes all the sense in the world. I it, uh, Prime should be very hyped about this because now we can turn this flag on and force return types everywhere. Export function foo. Error. Function must have an explicit return type annotation with isolated declarations. So why are these errors desirable? because it tells us upfront whether other tools will have issues generating declaration files, they'll provide a quick fix to help us add these missing annotations. Super, super nice. This mode doesn't require annotations everywhere though. For locals, these can be ignored since they don't affect the public API. For example, the following code would not produce an error. Const x add one, two. We don't care because it's not exported, but if we didn't put string here in this explicit return, we would get an error. There are also certain expressions where the type is trivial to calculate. So because we assign x to 10, it knows. Because we're returning a constant here, it knows. Because we're returning something coming from math or we assigned the type on the return itself, we know what it is. In order to use this, you have to set one of these flags. Note that isolated declarations does not change how TypeScript performs emit, just how it reports errors. This is just for errors, very interesting. Huge credit to everybody who worked on that. It's a very nice lift and people will be very hyped for it. Makes sense that companies like Bloomberg and Google with giant TypeScript infrastructure teams are the ones who wanted this. Ooh, the config directory template variable for configuration files. It's common in many code bases to reuse a shared tsconfig.json file that acts as a base for other configuration files. This is done by using the extends field in tsconfig.json files. Yes, yes it is. If I go to the upload thing code base and we go to any of the sub packages, let's just go to the React package 
tsconfig, extends, add upload thing, tsconfig base. We turned the upload thing, tsconfig, into a module, if I recall. At the very least, I should be able to see in the package JSON. Yeah, we have the upload thing, tsconfig. This package is just used for us internally in order to do our type checking. But we had to make that a package in order to make all of this work because there's no other way to get the type definitions in here reasonably. Here it is. We actually made a package that is literally just our base config and our build configs so that we could use these in our other packages. The fact that we made a package to manage the TS config for other packages is insanity. And now looks like we won't have to. One of the other issues that we've had with the tsconfig JSON files, they're all relative to the location of the file. So if you have a tsconfig base that JSON file that's using multiple projects, relative paths often won't be useful in derived projects. Yeah, totally agree. The other's intent was that every tsconfig file that excludes this file should do the following. Output to a disk directory relative to the derived tsconfig file, and have custom types directory relative to the derived tsconfig.json. And this would not work because these are all going to be based on where the imported roots are coming from. But now we have config directory. Yay, this took way too long and is going to make multi. The, the fact that mono repos for TypeScript aren't a solved problem is just insane. And this is one of those pieces that makes it way more viable, way more viable. So I'm hyped on this. Not to keep citing the same person over and over, almost like he has a specialty or something. Matt Pocock dropped a really nice thing on Twitter yesterday monorepo.md, where he discusses the three different ways to build the TypeScript monorepo and the benefits and negatives. Because as he says, a whole of the different ways are kind of bad in their own unique way. Totally agree. And he shows all of the different ways, including but not limited to, a single tsconfig JSON file in the root of your whole monorepo. Chaos. No one should have to do this. And when you add things like configdir, suddenly we have some flexibility. Now, when a project extends this file, the path will be relative to the derived tsconfig, not the shared tsconfig file. This makes it easier to share configuration files across projects and ensures the configuration files are now more portable. Oof, this is a really nice change. I'm sure Julius is gonna be hyped on that. Consulting the package.json dependencies for declaration file generation. Ugh, this took so long. Common error, the inferred type of x cannot be named without a reference to y. This is likely not portable. A type annotation is necessary. This is often due to TypeScript's declaration file generation finding itself in the contents of files that were never explicitly imported in a program. Generating an import to such a file could be risky if the path ended up being relative. Still, for code bases with explicit dependencies in the dependencies or peer depths or optional depths of package.json, generating such an import should be safe under certain resolution modes. So in TypeScript 5.5, we're more lenient with when that's the case, and many occurrences of this error should just disappear. That's actually cool. No changes have to be made. If you're getting weird local inference things between packages, it might just go away now. That's nice. Some of my dumb hacks might be fixed too. Ooh, editor and watch mode reliability improvements. I'll be real. I've never trusted watch mode with TypeScript very much. Nice to know that they recognize that and they're fixing it. But more importantly here, this is going to make watch crash less, which means huge, 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 huge. TRPC and Zod fanboys stand strong. Our editors are hopefully going to crash less. Woof. No more TypeScript server restarts. Maybe. I'm excited to see if we feel the difference. Let me know in the comments if you're using 5.5 and if your TS server is crashing less because I'm, I'm really hopeful. Fingers crossed. Correctly refresh editor errors in configuration files. TypeScript can generate errors for tsconfig.json files. However, those errors are actually generated from loading a project, and editors typically don't directly request those errors for your tsconfig.json files. While this might sound like a technical detail, it means that when all errors issued in a tsconfig.json file are fixed, TypeScript doesn't issue new, fresh, empty sets of errors, and users are left with stale errors unless they reload their editor. Yep. This is a, a funny bug where new errors would be shown. No errors, if you got to that state, would just show you the stale errors. Now TypeScript 5.5 will intentionally issue out an event to clear those out. That's a silly thing that this wasn't fixed before, but I'm pumped that that is finally working. Ooh, ooh, I've run into this problem a lot where I like delete a bunch of files, then make a new file. TypeScript would go mad and I would have to reset. I regularly found myself like deleting a file or moving a directory and TypeScript freaking the fuck out. I just force the classic restart TypeScript server. The regularity at which this saved my butt is hilarious. And a large part of why I was doing that was because I moved files around and things broke. That seems like it's going to be a lot less likely. Ooh, symlinks are now tracked in failed resolutions as well. When TypeScript fails to resolve a module, it will still need to watch for any failed lookup paths in case the module is added later. Previously, this was not done for symlinked directories. Ooh, I had actually thought about that. So things like pnpm and bun that will symlink for the modules would run into issues because if I was to have a package that was missing and it re realized it was missing and then I npm install, it won't update because it didn't see the folder was there and it wasn't waiting for the symlink to come through. Now the symlinks are being checked. You won't have to restart your editors often. I'm so happy TypeScript crashing and my editor is being addressed. Project references contribute to auto imports. Ooh, that's nice. Auto imports will actually pay attention to project references now. 
Ooh, there's also some performance and size optimizations. Monomorphized objects are now handled in the language server and public API. First, they ensured that node and symbol objects had a consistent set of properties with consistent initialization order. Doing so helps reduce polymorphism in different operations, which allows runtime to fetch properties more quickly. Cool. By making this change, we witnessed impressive speed wins in the compiler. However, most of the changes were performed on internal allocators for our data structures. Language service, along with TypeScript's public API, uses a different set of allocators for certain objects. This allowed the TypeScript compiler to be a bit leaner, as data used only for the language service would never be used in the compiler. But in 5.5, the same monomorphization work has now been done for the language server and public API. Oh, our editor will now be as fast as the compiler. The benchmarks have seen a 5.8% speed up in build times when using the public TypeScript API allocators in language service operations getting 10 to 20% faster. Looks like you don't need that M4 MacBook after all, boys. Just upgrade your TypeScript version instead. It does imply an increase in memory though, so maybe don't rock that 8 gig model anymore. But we believe the trade-off is worth it, and we hope to find ways to reduce the memory overhead. Things should feel a lot snappier now. Can't wait. They found one more change that reduces check times by 1%. Cool, awesome, proud of you guys for that. Optimizations on the control flow graph. In many cases, control flow analysis will traverse nodes that don't provide any new information. We observed that in the absence of any early termination or effects in the and seen it's Okay, this, we, we have went far past my depth here. This is a lot of words for a 2% reduction in build times. Skip checking in transpile module and transpile declaration. TypeScript's transpile module API can be used for compiling a single TypeScript file's contents into JS. Similarly, the transpile declaration API, see below, can be used to generate a declaration file from a single TypeScript file. One of the issues with these APIs is that TypeScript internally would perform a full type check pass over the entire contents of the file before emitting that output. This was necessary to collect certain information which would later be used for the emit phase. In 5.5, we found a way to avoid performing a full check, only lazily collecting the information as necessary. Transpile module and transpile declaration both enable this function by default. As a result, tools that integrate with these APIs like TS Loader with transpile only and TS Jess should see a notable speed up. In our testing, we generally witnessed around two times speed up in build times using transpile module. Nice. I still lean into things like TS up, which just hacks this with ES build, but nice that the official TypeScript solution is in a good enough state. Ooh, the actual TypeScript package is smaller, not that this really matters for anything because you're not shipping the TypeScript package. The fact that it's smaller is nice. Node reuse and declaration emit. Cool. So now when we're emitting things, they significantly improved how often TypeScript can directly copy your input source code when producing declaration files. So previously, if you did this where you had string then bool, but also one that's bool and string, if TypeScript parses this, it could just take the types that you wrote. It could just generate the types based on what it knows, or it could use the type definitions that you give it. The reason this would be the default is that we're assigning it a value, which means world is the first value being assigned. So intuitively, it makes sense for that to be the first thing. It's the canonical representation for each type, but the others to reuse the existing types. The second approach is generally preferable for a few reasons. Many equivalent representations still encode some level of intent that is better to preserve in the declaration file. Producing a fresh representation of a type can be somewhat expensive, so avoiding that is better, and user written types are usually shorter than the generated ones. Yep, nice not have TypeScript to change its mind for us about what types we write. So they've greatly improved the number of places where TypeScript can correctly identify places where it's safe and correct to print back types exactly as they were written in the original file. Many of these cases are invisible performance improvements. TypeScript would generate fresh sets of syntax nodes and serialize them into a string. But instead, TypeScript can now operate over the original syntax nodes directly, which is much cheaper and faster. They're also making crazy things happen with discriminated unions. Awesome. Again, we're outside of my world, but they shave 250 milliseconds off the TypeScript compiler compiling TypeScript. Good for them. Easier API consumption from ECMAScript modules. Ooh. Previously, if you were writing an ECMAScript module in Node, named imports were not available from the TypeScript package. Hmm. Ooh. You have to ts.default previously. The reason was that the CJS module lexer did not recognize the patterns of TypeScript's generated common JS code. This has been fixed, and users can now use named imports for TypeScript MPM package with ECMAScript modules in Node. Oh, this is for TypeScript's package itself. This isn't things that you would have to deal with. This is if you were consuming and importing things from TypeScript, the NPM package. Ugh, nice that they fixed that. Transpile declaration API. Previously, they had transpile module, an isolated module. This is a new one based on the things we were talking about earlier, where you just want to generate d.ts files. This makes it a lot easier to get those. It's specifically designed to generate a single declaration file based on some input source text. Huge. Here are all the behavioral changes. These are things that people should worry about if they're migrating an old code base and they want to figure out why things are broken. A bunch of notes about that. Some bugs that were fixed. Cool stuff overall. I think that's it, though. What's next? At this point, we anticipate very few changes to 5.5 apart from critical bug fixes to the compiler and minor bug fixes to the language service. The next few weeks, we'll be releasing the first stable version of 5.5. Keep an eye out on our iteration plan for target release dates and more 
if you need to coordinate around that. Otherwise, our main focus is on developing 5.6. We'll have the iteration plan available on that in the coming days, including scheduled release dates. On top of that, we make it easy to use nightly builds in TypeScript on NPM. There's an extension to use those nightly releases in Visual Studio Code. Good stuff. I want to take a quick look at this release plan quick. It looks like the final release is scheduled for the 18th. So if you're watching this now, you're pretty far ahead. But if you're watching this later, when this is already released, let me know how it's like to use because I'm really excited about this release. And until next time, peace nerds.